the thing I would say is, when you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way it is, and your your life is just to live your life inside the world. Try not to bash into the walls too much. Uh, uh, try to have a nice family life. Uh, have fun. Save a little money. Um, but life. That's a very limited life. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact, and that is everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. And you can change it. You can influence it. You can you can build your own things that other people can use. And the minute that you understand that you can poke life and actually something will you know if you push in something will pop out the other side. That you can you can change it. You can mold it. Um, that's maybe the most important thing: is to shake off this uh, th this uh, erroneous notion that life is is there and you're just going to live in it, versus embrace it, change it, improve it, make your mark upon it. Um, I, I think that's very important. And however you learn that, once you learn it, uh, you'll want to change life and make it better because it's kind of messed up in a lot of ways. Um, once you learn that, you'll never be the same again. Most people don't get those experiences because they never ask. Uh, I've never found anybody that didn't want to help me if I asked them for help. I always call them up. I called up, um, this will date me, but I called up Bill Hewlett when I was 12 years old. And he lived in Palo Alto. His number was still in the phone book. And he answered the phone himself. He said, yes? He said, hi, I'm Steve Jobs. I'm 12 years old. I, I'm a, a student in high school, and I want to build a frequency counter. And I was wondering if you had any spare parts I could have. And he laughed, and he, he gave me the spare parts to build this frequency counter, and he gave me a job that summer in Hewlett Packard, working on the assembly line, putting nuts and bolts together on frequency counters. He got me a job in the place that built them. And I was in heaven. And I've never found anyone who said no or hung up the phone when I called. I just asked. And when people ask me, I try to be as responsive, you know, to pay that that debt of gratitude back. Um, most people never pick up the phone and call. Most people never ask, and that's what separates sometimes the people that do things from the people that just dream about them. You got to you got to act, and you've got to be uh, willing to uh, fail. You've got to be willing to crash and burn. You know, with people on the phone, with starting a company, with whatever. If you're afraid of failing. Uh, you won't get very far. People say you, you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing, and it's totally true. And the reason is because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard, and you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, if you're not having fun doing it, and you don't really love it, uh, you're going to give up. And that's what happens to most people, actually. If you really look at, 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 at the ones that uh, ended up you know, being successful, unquote, in the eyes of society and the ones that didn't. Oftentimes, it, it's the ones that are successful loved what they did so they could persevere when, you know, when it got really tough. And, and the ones that, that didn't love it quit because they're sane, right? Who would want to put up with this stuff if you don't love it? So it's a lot of hard work and, and it's a lot of worrying constantly. And uh, um, if you don't love it, you're going to fail. So you got to love it. You got to have passion. I'm convinced that about half of what separates the successful entrepreneurs from the non-successful ones is pure perseverance. It is so hard. You pour so much of your life into this thing. There are such rough moments in time that most people give up. I don't blame them. I mean, it's really tough. And it consumes your life. I mean, if, you're, if you've got a family and you're in the early days of a company, it's, I can't imagine how one could do it. I'm sure it's, it's been done, but it's rough. I mean, because it's a pretty much a, you know, an 18 hour a day job, seven days a week for a while. So, unless you have a lot of passion about this, you're going to not survive. You're going to give it up. So, you got to have an idea of, and a, or a, a problem or a, a, a wrong that you want to write that you're passionate about. Otherwise, you're not going to have the perseverance to stick it through. It's very interesting. I was worth. Um about over a million dollars when I was 23 and over 10 million dollars when I was 24 and it's it wasn't that important uh, because I never did it for the money I, I think money is a wonderful thing because it enables you to do things 
It enables you to in invest in ideas that don't have a short-term payback and things like that. But especially at that point in my life, it was, it was not the most important thing. The most important thing was the company, the people, the products we were making, what we were going to enable people to do with these products. So uh, I didn't think about it a great deal. You know, I never sold any stock. And just really believed that the company would, would do very well over the long term. I'm working pretty hard. So are a lot of people, but I'm one of them. My car is there pretty early and it's in the parking lot pretty late and on weekends. And I value my family time a lot. So I, I'm pretty committed to this and seeing Apple turn around. The company, I mean, it's, I started the company with Steve Wozniak in my parents' garage 20 years ago and uh, over 22 years ago. And so there's a definite place in my heart for this. Uh, I'm drawing a salary of, I think, a dollar per year. So uh, I hope I'm not burdening the shareholders too much. And, and I'm, I very much want to see Apple get turned around. And I think it's going to. So I, I don't know how much more committed I could be if people need these symbols. Well, maybe that'll happen. I don't know. But, but um, you know, my answer to them is I don't know how I could be working any harder. And Sometimes life's going to hit you in the head with a brick. Don't lose faith. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love. And that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. When I was young, there was an amazing publication called the Whole Earth Catalog. It was created by a fellow named Stuart Brand, not far from here in Menlo Park, and he brought it to life with his poetic touch. Stuart and his team put out several issues of the Whole Earth Catalog, and then, when it had run its course, they put out a final issue. It was the mid-1970s, and I was your age. On the back cover of their final issue, was a photograph of an early morning country road, the kind you might find yourself hitchhiking on if you were so adventurous. Beneath it were the words, stay hungry, stay foolish. It was their farewell message as they signed off, stay hungry, stay foolish. And I have always wished that for myself. And now, as you graduate to begin anew, I wish that for you. Stay hungry, Stay foolish.